Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're back with us. Welcome, thank you for joining us. We will get started at one o'clock. We're just watching as people join the room. Thank you, thank you. Welcome everyone. We're so glad you could rejoin us today. We will be kicking off this session in just a moment, allowing everyone time to enter the room. Please hold off on questions until Jeff leads us through a few reminders um, as we get started for the day. So just hold off for a second, sit back with your beverage and your notes and relax. Christina, I don't know about you, but it's sunny here in Spokane today, and it's quite lovely. It is beautiful over in Vancouver, Washington. It is a little humid, but it's nice. I actually got to go outside for a minute between everything that was going on today. Good for you. I hope you get to as well. All right, so it's people one are still. People are still joining. Uh, you, you should notice on the share screen, there are a few details. Um, please consider that your Zoom window on your device is for you to control. If you do whatever you do, it's up to you. Uh, just a reminder, the leave button in the bottom corner means you're gonna leave. Um, other than that, you get to control your Zoom window from your side. We'll wait a moment longer and then we'll do our welcome notices. And then we're gonna dive in. Christine, I'm excited today. I got to play a lot with teams last night and I learned a lot and my brain is still tingling and tickling to thinking what is else could I do and what else can I be moving forward with? Yeah, I had a good time um, checking into some of the questions from yesterday and pondering how I would do that in teams. So I hope that today we are able to answer some of your lingering questions and also know that there will be questions that we hold off to answer for tomorrow because we're not done yet. With that, let's go ahead and take care of some of the details at the beginning before we get to our content today. And one is again, welcome. You are in a webinar format for Zoom. Uh, we love to do open Zooms, uh, but the webinar format is what we chose because we have so many participants. Uh, with that, your chat and your video is disabled. Uh, your mic's disabled. Uh, the only thing you can get out of your chat is anything that we post to you. So we will be posting the links to the slides today. We will be posting links to other resources. So watch your chat for those links. And remember some of your devices, you can click on that link and otherwise you can copy paste and put it in your web browser. You can go to those. Uh, on your bottom of your Zoom screen, maybe on your device, it might be in a, a different spot, but on the bottom of, of most of your screens, you will see the Q&A option. The Q&A option is a place for you to ask questions and then our team will be answering those questions. We do ask that your questions be framed around the content and the materials because that helps us. Like Christina was just mentioning, she went through and I went through, what were those questions that we had yesterday and what were the questions that were left unanswered? Uh, so for our focus today, we really wanna make sure that we can curate and take the time today to, to make this best for you. Also to note that we have uh, Steffi right now is our ASL interpreter. Uh, we have her on today and we also have another interpreter. We appreciate you doing that so much. And the closed caption option is also under your control on the bottom. Remember, you can control your Zoom window. Uh, a hint for some of us in that top right hand corner, you might even see an option that says gallery or speaker view. You can move the things around and make it be what you want it to be because you're the one in control of that. 
Uh, clock hours, uh, for clock hours for today, you're in the Zoom meeting. If you're in the Zoom meeting with us, your clock hours will be registered to you because attendance is automatically taken. If you clicked a link and it asked you to put your name in, then you know your name was in. If you clicked the link and you got in without putting your name, it automatically puts your name in. Everybody's name's in. Everybody who's here is getting attendance taken. Don't worry about it. I also heard, Christina, that we are live with the on-demand course, so people can register for that immediately, or maybe you have already registered for it, and you can take the on-demand, so you can go in at your own leisure and go at your own pace, and you could do a rewind on the video, watch it again. I watched some of those last night. I was looking through them, and I liked it. I was able to go at my own pace. You can get an additional six hours for doing that. Uh, this video recording, which we are recording today, uh, will be available after it's processed and that we verify it for ADA compliance. About a week before we would have those recordings available. And I also note that some of you maybe missed a session. Unfortunately, we cannot give clock hours to anybody who is not in the live session. So we will not be able to provide clock hours for watching the videos. That's why we have the on-demand choices. And we are only recording attendance for those that are logged into the meeting. Thanks, Christina. With that, let's go ahead and, uh, Christina, could I get a thumbs up that the slide deck now shows our intro slide, LMS 101 part two for Microsoft Teams. Uh, this is day two. And remember, yeah, we have ready. three days, uh, one more day after today, and encourage you and remind you that you are the learner. You're in control of your own learning. So as you're thinking about things and you have your note page handy or whatever it is, most important, remember that Whatever we're doing today, it's about you and the learner, and we're hoping to give some things to you to stimulate your thinking and invite you in to be that learner explorer, because really you're gonna have to get your hands in there to, to make sure that your brain is capturing all of the things that it wants to capture. That being said, we want to honor again whose land we are on and remember uh, the first peoples and we want to remember the present peoples, all of us uh, together. We make an amazing, wonderful place. I like the questions that we had yesterday and it made me be mindful again that um, one of my colleagues is working with a Salish language and mathematics. I'm a math geek and I'm loving the ideas that our instructional practices at work really work for all languages and I'm learning a little bit more about that. I'm excited. I want to find out more. I don't know about you and where you're at. Uh, also to note that we are from all over the state on this project. We're the Association of ESDs. All nine ESDs are represented. And remember, this slide deck is available to you. The link will be pasted in the chat box so you can get that. It'll be pasted many times throughout our session today, and it'll be available later also on the A. ESD website. Uh, today we have lots of people. We have uh, our interpreters and we have people like Christina who's co-hosting with me today. Thank you, Christina. And Christina, where are you from again? I'm joining in from ESD 112 in Vancouver, Washington. My home base is in Battleground, Washington, just slightly north. Awesome. And we do have other people in the background today off of video to help answer your Q&As. So do remember that they are looking at your questions and trying to answer them the best that they can. So please use the Q&A for questions about Microsoft Teams and what is it that we can do better to support you. Uh, our objectives, again, for the course is to really help you understand the LMS. Uh, we're going to just move on to the next slide here because we understand that you can read and you can look at the slide deck if you really wanted to dive into all of those objectives. As we're thinking today in particular, we wanna support you in selecting and managing materials. That's our focus today. How do you get the materials into Teams, our learning management system? How do you do that so your students can engage with the learning that you want for them? Today, again, for our agenda, a real quick one, we're doing the intro and uh, we have a different poll to start us off today. Christina, I'm excited about using a poll that's available within Zoom. For those of you who are using Zoom, we're gonna show that off today. I love it, Christina, that we're mindful and trying to engage all of the participants. Right now, it looks like we have 358. Uh, it would be really hard to do open chat and everybody chatting in there. So we're going to use some features in Zoom today to engage you as learners. Then we're going to be really looking at in your LMS today, what's the organization and then how do we add content and materials? Like how do you add files? How do you add assignments? How do you share things? How do we start into that? And we're going to dive into that today. Hey, with that, I am going to launch a poll. Now this is through the Zoom, but we know that there's also polling features within Teams that we'll show you on 
um, Thursday on day three. Um, today, the poll will be launched in just a moment. It sometimes hides behind other windows. So if you have lots of windows showing, you might have to look for it. If you can't participate in the poll, that's okay. Don't stress. This is just a, real, a quick way for us to check in with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll. And as I launch the poll in the background as a teacher, I can see how many um, people have already responded. So we're gonna see if we can beat our 30 second um, response rate. I would suggest that if you're interested in Zoom polls, there's lots of help files out there, as well as setting them up ahead of time, because while you can set them up on the fly, they do take a little bit of time and they're a little cumbersome. So 30 seconds in, and I have 55% of the vote, about 200 people. It's That's impressive pretty awesome. how much information we can get in such a quick time. As I'm looking at things, I'm starting to see that some people didn't have a chance to dabble last night, and that's okay. Um, when I end our poll here in a short moment, I will share the results with everyone. You'll see them on your screen as well. We have about 72% of the votes in, and I'm just going to let it run for about 20 more seconds. Christina, I appreciate that people uh, from all sorts of different explorations from last night and excitements for today are coming with us. It's great to see the variety here. It's also nice to know that some people who said rock star for what they got to explore last night, that they had like the time or the experience previously. And it's encouraging to me to know that when I put more time into it, I can not only just dabble a little, but I can really get there and get to a place where I feel really confident with the material. Maybe Christina, we might have to ask some of our rock stars to lead uh, the rest of the session if we're feeling a little tired. Yeah, we could upgrade them as hosts right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end the poll. I know not everybody had a chance to participate, so please don't feel like we're ending it early, but I just want to make sure that we get on to the content. So I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the results with everyone. And as you can see, it looks like about 108 of us or 37% of us had a chance to dabble a little bit last night inside Teams. That's very encouraging and I encourage you to keep dabbling. We also have about 20 per participants, 7% that are rock stars. If Rock stars, I encourage you to reach out to your peers, to your friends, help them work together because we are better together. Now, if I look down at question number two, I looks like most people, about 89 participants currently, or 30% are really interested in how to organize materials. And they're also looking to begin planning use. So that definitely helps us on what we're gonna highlight today in session two. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. If this poll still shows up on your screen, feel free to click off on the little red dot in the top left-hand corner. Thanks, Christina. I think it's perfect for what we planned and looking at the results from last night's surveys, uh, this, is, uh, this is the right stuff for them today. Matter of fact, I know that some of the things that you and I talked about is gonna answer even the first question that I saw come up in the Q&A today. That being said, I want to remind us that we want to always take opportunities to get better. I know that uh, the educators that I've had uh, the privilege of working with over the last 30 years have always been wonderful about pushing me to be better. And so now as we have this opportunity to really reimagine or restructure or reframe our learning classes or our learning spaces, remember that we want to have that framed around the, the things that are not only the directives from our, our, our office of the superintendent of public instruction, but also what we know by best practices and what law says we should be doing. So remember those instructional frameworks, the universal design for learning, social emotional learning needs, and the culturally responsive teaching practices. Remember, these are all guiding us and should be guiding us. So as you're thinking about, especially how do you take stuff that you used to do in the classroom face to face, how do you like transport that or translate that over to this virtual space? I used to put it on my walls as a poster, but how do I do that in this virtual learning space? You get to really reimagine and recreate your learning space with your, your learners, your students. So remember, keep in mind the frameworks that we want to help us to be the best that we can be. 
So again, this section, we're going to think about how to organize your course, which looks like many of us we were thinking about. Along that, we're going to see that the more that we get into this learning management system, Microsoft Teams, you're going to start thinking like it's laid out and you're going to start uh, incorporating how do I navigate because you're going to see it more and your brain's going to catch up with it. Uh, also today, we're going to think about the layout options, where things go and how do you manage things and how do you put things in those spaces that you want to. Christina, I know that you have something to share about channels in a moment, and I'm excited to hear about that. Also, we're going to talk uh, and learn and look at how do you really get the resources and materials into your class? Uh, I know how to do that in my face-to-face -face classroom. How do I do that in Microsoft Teams? How do we do discussions and how do I add assignments? That's what we're going to be looking at today. All right, with that, Christina, did you want to share your Teams? I've got my team space here, and you had a couple things that you learned from last night, if I recall. And you're muted. All right, so I'm going to pull up and share with you, and I apologize for the move here. Make sure that it shares there. Okay, so I am inside my Teams, and actually, Oops, need to make my screen slightly bigger. I want to be in my Teams. And we saw that several of you in the um, Q&A from yesterday were talking about that you're not using Teams as your LMS, but that's what this course is about. So we're gonna do a slight thing about the video conferencing, but that is not the um, agenda for this course. So we are just gonna show you a couple pieces. Inside my course, I have a test course here. Um, of course, I have my first channel. My first channel is everybody who's been added in this course has access to this channel. And yesterday you saw how we could post things and materials and do other things in the chat world here. Adding a second channel. So I'm going to go up to the three dots here. I'm going to add a channel. And when I add a channel, I give it a name. So I could add this as biology period three, because we heard that some of you are adding all your students to one team, and then you're trying to separate things by channels. So I'm naming this. I could give it more description here. And then I have this choice, standard, accessible to everybody on the team. And so if I have 800 people in this team, do I want all 800 people to see this channel or do I want to invite specific people to this channel? So I'm going to select private and I'm going to be able to then choose who has access to this channel. And that does not need to be everybody in the larger team. Remember, we're still just working in one team and we're delineating by channels. So I'm going to select next. When it does that, it pops me up because I told it I want it to be a private channel. And in a minute, you're going to see that it has a little um, padlock on the corner to indicate that it is a private channel. And now I can search for students. So I know Catherine is with me in the background. So I'm going to click on Catherine and I'm going to add her as a student. I can go into teachers and add teachers, but unfortunately this is in my ESD 112 account. So I'm going to pick a person that I know will be okay and can ignore this. So I know um, Kathy will be okay if I add her as a teacher and I can remove her later. So I'm gonna go ahead and select add. So now it's saying that I have some issues here. That's because she's not a user of the larger team. I would have to add her at the top level of the team and then as a teacher in this channel. I just wanted to model that because I know some of us are gonna try to do it right here and wonder why does it keep doing this to me? So making sure I caught that, Christina. If you're adding somebody to a channel, they have to be on the team first, that is in the class or the team is what we call it here, before you can add them to a sub channel. Exactly, so kind of, it's kind of a hierarchy. You have to be in the team and then I can invite you to the special team meeting. It, when you say that, it reminds me of my physical classroom. When I get my roster, then I have all my students, then I can put them on, in the seating chart. <laughs> Unless they're on my roster, I'm not going to have them in my seating chart yet. So exactly. it feels like that to me. So now that I'm done with that channel, you see that on here, I have the general channel. Everybody in the team can see this. I have biology period two, which is a private channel that only certain members can be in. 
And I have biology period three, which is again, another private channel that only certain people on the team are invited into. It's like creating groups in your physical classroom. Now I can go up to the video conferencing button and it's gonna turn on my camera and now you guys get to see my real house because it doesn't have virtual backgrounds. I could turn off the camera and just have my image show. Um, I can reverse the camera, choose a different camera. And then when I select meet now, it opens me up into the virtual meeting room. I have a lot of features. I can share my screen. It says open share tray. I have my microphone, my video. I have an ability to show conversations. I have more actions that let me do raised hand or full screen. I even have a keypad. Um, and then I could also go ahead and show participants as well. And I don't have any participants in this class, so it's not gonna be as exciting. But if I show participants, it would be similar to a Zoom meeting where you would have all the tiles on this side. I'm gonna hang up on this one. And it pops me back out. Now it of course generated this little survey immediately. I didn't do anything that says the meet ended. How was the call quality? That is for teams. That is not for me as a teacher to get that feedback. It's to give feedback to teams on the video quality of the video conferencing for feature. I'm gonna pause here because I know there's some questions, but I want to also attend to the other items on our list today. So I'll take about two to three really important questions. Catherine or, or Christina, while I'm thinking about this uh, and I see some of the questions come in, what if I need to add somebody new to my period three or period two uh, channel? Like, oh, I got a new student. <laughs> Literally, I have a new student and I so want to put, put them in. Okay, I'm sorry. So first they have to be added to the team that might be done by your district or right. it might be done by you. Once they're added to the team level, that top level, then I can go into my biology three. I have these three dots here and I could add members here. Awesome. Or if I'm already in the channel and I come up to this little eye in the top right hand corner, it's going to show me who's in it and I have a little add button again. Anytime you see two little avatars next to each other with a plus, that allows you to add members. And I'm adding members to this channel. It also is telling me this channel is private because if I came over here and created a new channel and I said this was um, feedback and I left it standard, everybody in the class would have access to this channel. And I can also automatically show this channel in everybody's list. So I can force it to show up for everybody. So when I click add, there's a new channel, but it's not locked because everybody in the main team has access to this channel. That makes me think of things like where I might want to have like a technology channel or a specific channel about maybe, and it depends too on what my class is, but like content or ideas, just like the channel I would turn on the old, old TV or change the channel. Like what is it that I want to be streaming for content in that channel? Like you have it as biology periods two and three, but I'm also thinking I might have that same feed about or the channel about whatever it is that we need to talk about. Maybe it's um, tools like our tech tools. Maybe it's about your end plans. Maybe it's about ASB. I'm not sure, but you have that creativity. Yeah, and so then if I'm using a different LMS, which again, we're not gonna get into too much, I can link this. So it says, get a link to the team and I can go place this somewhere else that would send them back to teams and then they'd be able to go to the correct channel for their video conferencing session. Thanks, and I found that just under the three dots there. Okay, so Jeff, I am gonna pass the baton back to you to work on the rest of the session. Sounds great. I think I'm ready to dive back into my Microsoft Teams. Could I get a thumbs up that you see on my home team page that I've got a couple classes here, a couple teams? Christina, am I sharing I that screen good? 
Great. So I have a, a new team I made uh, just today for our session. Uh, I got to play a lot last night in learning teams together. And I remember that on the left hand side, I have all sorts of options. Uh, I will call it out because uh, I want to learn so much. And Christina, when you were sharing things out, like even the calls, I'm like, oh, how do you do breakout rooms? And how do you do this? And my mind is a blur and a, a blaze with all of this stuff. Remember, this is a 101 course where we want to get to the basics of teams. There are a lot of other things that you and your group or your teams can dive into, and we will be providing other services and supports for other things like how to use uh, different features even within Microsoft. Speaking of that, uh, Christine, I noticed under my waffle for my apps, there are a lot of different apps that are out there, and uh, that's a lot of learning that I'm looking forward to, to think about how do I create my own learning space for my, for my kids. Uh, so I'm going to be back here in my Teams interesting it opens a new tab if I click that um, and I'm gonna go into our LMS learning teams so today I remember from yesterday we had posts that was up on the top here today we're gonna look at files and class notebook and assignments up on the top whenever you're into a team you will always have these menu options there's a, the main options that you'll need to know like your post is a stream of things that you're posting and the files that's what we're looking at today and we'll look at notebook and we'll look at assignments as well it's interesting I noticed that uh, that on the screen I haven't added anything on my stream right now although it sees oh Christina you joined as a guest to the team awesome you got my invite uh, upload class materials or find help in training those are the two main options I did notice that this upload class materials is like I got to put my stuff in there so I clicked on that first I don't know about you but I would click there and then as soon as I clicked there I noticed there's the file thing on the top switched let me go back once more where I'm selected on the menu on posts at the top I noticed that I can also select files going to files is the place where you keep all your files it's like your file cabinet and uh, when I get here uh, I can put anything that I want to in here for my learners, for my kids. Uh, I noticed a moment ago it gave me a message and now it says class materials. It actually made them for me. Uh, by the way, these class materials, as I understand them, are read only for the learners or the students until I share them out individually. Uh, and my, oh, there's the message, read only until the students get permissions from the teacher, uh, but only teachers can edit it. So the kids can see all of these files because they're going to be files for the class. So as I'm going to do that, I'm, I'm going to play. I see a lot of new buttons up here. And one of the things about any of the new programs I'm learning, I just take a moment to look and see what is available. So I noticed under files, it gave me a new sub menu and there's a bunch of things here. Copy link, copy link. I'm wondering what that is. Oh, this is cool. This is a link to this specific class materials folder. That's this page in Teams. It's interesting also, Christina, my brain was uh, on overload as I was looking at SharePoint stuff and learning again about SharePoint. That's a different feature or a different app within Microsoft. And that might be something that your group is using. You have to decide what you're going to do, but you could link it in SharePoint or in Teams. It's almost one of those. There's always a different way to get to content and get around. But this would be the link that I could share out if I was going to email that or post it somewhere else. So I have that up on the top, the copy link. Let's see, what else do I have? I upload. That's like if I want to upload files from my uh, drive that I've already had, it's things that I've created, things that I'm already thinking about. Like I was so excited. I just was typing on the road trip and I created like all these cool things and now I want to share them with the class. I'm ready for that. Or maybe it's stuff from last year. I'm ready to upload. Or I noticed that there's this new option. Under new, we've got some things like a folder. I can make my cool folder and you have to decide what you want it to be. Maybe you want it to be things like a uh, week one content or whatever you want. Maybe you could do that. And I see there's a folder there and you can go into the folder. Christina, this reminds me, it feels just like when I'm file managing on my computer. Maybe it's on a PC or a Macintosh, but it always feels the same kind of thing. I can add new things. Matter of fact, I can add a folder within a folder to add whatever you wanted to. Now, I wouldn't recommend uh, making too many clicks for students, but I wanted to show you something for fun. You can make folders within folders within folders, and uh, you can continue doing so. And I noticed that as I did it, it made a breadcrumb trail. So I wanted to show the breadcrumb trail by giving a few folders. 
Again, we don't want students to click too much. It's too much work. I'm guessing you don't like to click too much to find things. So you think about your hierarchy, your organization, what would be best for your students? As a math geek, I'll tell you this, lower the chaos level. It's better for your brain. So think about how to do that when you're organizing. But you can then use a breadcrumb trail to go back to different folders. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my general, the, the root folder. And you know what, Christina, I was thinking about it. That organization system is not gonna work for me. It's too many clicks. I can click on class materials, the little radio button, and I notice I have an option to delete now. Uh, I'm gonna just delete it. I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, do I really want to? Oh, whew, you can always add it back by going to add cloud storage and finding it there. It's almost like it's just saving everything just in case. Really, really freeing up for my mind so I can just go play and know that I'm not gonna break it. So deleting and it's gone. Uh, what else can I add? Christina, when I was looking last night, I noticed that uh, there are a lot of things that I'm familiar with. I'm, I'm really good at Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint. Uh, and then there's like even these forms, like, I don't know, maybe I'll do the forms. So I was trying and like, I was thinking maybe put in something like this, um, like, who are you? I want to do a form to get to know my students. So I went ahead and I uh, did this. This is my uh, learning. And uh, Christina is like, nothing happened. <laughs> I'm like, what happened? It opened a new tab and nothing happened, it looked like. So I'm like, oh, I'll close it. And then I came back to my main screen and it said, oh, by the way, uh, be careful to not add certain characters. <laughs> so certain characters, by the way, uh, break the system on the back end. So as computer programmers go, sometimes you can't use all of the characters. So I learned I can't use the question mark. So if you ever get one of those screens that blanks up and you're like, I don't know what was happening because uh, I didn't get anything. I thought it was supposed to do something. Maybe go to the other tab in your browser and see if it gave you an error. I see here, this is a form for doing all sorts of cool things. Uh, this again is not the place where we're gonna learn about forms or the other apps, but this is a cool thing that now I can go explore and I can learn about it. I, I noticed that it has lots of options on it and I can share and I can preview and I can do all sorts of things. Again, I'm just gonna tease your brains with that and drop it that you can make forms for you and your team. Uh, however you wanna do your learning on Microsoft Forms, if you use that, that's beyond the scope of our time today. I'm gonna close that window and uh, let's see. I, I see that it's there. Who are you is this form that was made a few seconds ago. I'm gonna also demonstrate adding something else uh, like a PowerPoint presentation. And I'm finding that there's interesting things that you can do within the system of Teams and there are a lot of ways to get around things. So I just opened or just created a new PowerPoint crew quarters. This time it made it in the same window I was in, in the same uh, frame or the same tab that I'm in and I can start making things in here but you know what this doesn't feel the same as PowerPoint usually does for me um, oh yeah yeah I'm in teams and I made a PowerPoint and so it's kind of like nested within the program I'm still on the internet and doing it and I noticed in the middle on the top up here I noticed some things I noticed that on mine I can open in a desktop app your desktop app is gonna have more power than this version on the web. It's gonna have more features to it. So if you're thinking you want all of the bells and whistles for one of these apps, you likely have an option to open in the desktop app. I yeah, noticed- I just wanna point out really quick though, mm -hmm. if you open it up in the desktop app, you will need to press it to go back to online before students can collaborate in it. Ah, uh, so if I go outside of Teams to go edit it, I have to make sure that it got put back away so that they can use it. It's changing so my brain and how I think. So on my desktop version where it says open in desktop app now, it'll say open online. So it's taking me back to this platform so that I can use it with my students. Awesome. I love it. Um, I, I looked at this and I'm going to look at this page too. Um, my brain is going, how do I get back to Teams in my file system? Um, I'm looking around, I'm looking around. Okay, I see all the regular stuff in PowerPoint. I see in the top it says PowerPoint. I know I could click on Teams to get back there. I also see the top right, it says close. And there's also the three dots. I see the three dots are in one color for more options. And I can see open in browser. Oh, wait a second. 
this is like another way of working with it. And I'm finding that when I open in browser, it opens up the browser version of Microsoft 365's PowerPoint editor. So I can do it in a browser. So it's like, do I want it nested or do I want it maybe in a different web browser? So there are options for when you are editing or working with any of these file types. Um, also, I notice on the top right, it says close. I'm going to hit close. I'm done with my editing for now. I'm going to come back to it. At least for now, I have started something. I know for me getting things going, I know that this is like for me, uh, my to-do list, the crew quarters. I just started it at least. So I have it as a placeholder that works for me. Um, so for files, you can add all sorts of files. You can download your files. You can add cloud storage. You can open in SharePoint. There's a lot of options for doing files. And remember, this is the space for your students to see and to work on things. They don't get access to edit anything unless you give it to them. Uh, just for a heads up again, when you open any of these files, you might see some options. And I did see, I thought on the top right, it's loading up. I thought I saw an option to share. Oh, here it comes. Da, 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 da. Hi, Jeff. I'm sorry to bust in, but I think we need to give our interpreters a, a chance to switch. Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I get excited about all the learning. <laughs> of course. Thank you. So in the files, this is the place where you get to host all of your files and upload and create your folders. And it's like a filing cabinet for where your kids can get their stuff, their, their things. Now, Christina, I noticed on the top that there was not just files, but the class notebook. And the class notebook was way cool. I'm going to click on this class notebook. This is first time for here. And it's going to give my students, all of us, a space to learn. Yes, and we're just pausing just another second as I don't see our interpreter um, up yet. Ah, there she is. So we will just pin her video. There we go. Continue on, Jeff. No worries. Uh, so this is going to be really cool. This is a space and some of you might use this feature. Some of you might not use this feature. It's a notebook that you create for your class. Uh, on this first page, I noticed there's a lot of things. It says there's a collaboration space, a content space, a teacher only space, and a student space. So as I notice over here, it's whether the student and the teacher can edit or can't edit. Uh, as a teacher, it looks like I can always look at the stuff, but I can't always edit the stuff. Let's see, can edit, can edit. Oh no, I can edit, I can edit, I can edit, I can edit as the teacher. So it looks pretty good. Um, and I'm looking at this now and I'm going, all right, so what do I do? Uh, Christina, where would I go? Oh, there's the next in the bottom corner. There's always buttons around all over the place. Give your brain a little space and sometimes just back away from the screen and look all around and see what you can find. There's going to be something for you. Oh, sweet. So in the notebooks, I noticed that there's different things I could have. Maybe there's a spot here where I want to do like reflections and I'm thinking about reflections for my kids. I want to have another section in there. I think that's probably it for now. Maybe I don't want quizzes in there. I don't want homework. Not yet. This is all I want for, for our, our notebooks. Christina, I noticed that this takes a bit to get the class notebooks ready because it's creating a number of files for each of the students. It's going to have a space for us to collaborate as a class. It's going to have a place for us to work individually as teachers, to work individually as learners, and it takes a little bit to do so. But to know this, that these notebooks, they, they sync up and they're kind of part of OneNote, but they live within it. And there's an interesting relationship between OneNote in general and what we're doing here with these notebooks. Um, so again, you can open these up and use OneNote to do some editing, which we'll show in a moment. But you also know that it's not generated from OneNote. These started in Teams, so they really live and exist in Teams. Happens to be that OneNote can read the files, which is really cool, but it's not the same thing. All right, I see some cool stuff over here. Oh, this is great. I can see my things that I'm looking at. And you know what? I look around and I see this was wonderful that they tell me that there's student notebooks, there's content library, there's collaboration space. It tells me what I can start doing. Oh, and all of these nice links if I have FAQs or questions that I'm thinking about. Um, I noticed that there was like all of these options on the top. There's even a tell me what you want to do. This is really cool. I can draw. This is nice. But for me, I'm like, 
I'm not quite getting it. There's something more. And then I notice that there's this purple arrow. There's a navigation panel. And I take a moment to make sure you see the navigation panel. It's the purple arrow right next to the top here. This navigation panel is really helpful for me because it tells me what space or what notebooks I'm in. So now I can see I'm on the welcome page. Oh, interesting. I can go to the collaboration space. I can go to our library. I can go to the teacher only. Oh, look at this. Christina must have her own space. I could go to her notebooks as well. I'm going to go to teacher only because I want to play for a minute. Um, and under the teacher only, I see under teacher only, I can click on the using the teacher only and it gives me some information. I encourage you and invite you to do the reading on here or just start playing and clicking away. You're not going to break it. Uh, have some fun and see what you can learn. I know for me, it took a minute um, as I was getting updated on Teams. I was like, where did that thing go? How do I add a new page? Because I want to start typing and writing. And uh, I was looking at things and oops, my navigation page went away. My navigation panel, uh, I want it open because I noticed at the bottom, bottom, I can add pages or add sections. I'm in now under the teacher only, under teacher only, I can add a page. And under the page, I can now make my own notes page for whatever I want to, which is really cool. Um, so in my notes page today, I might put my cursor there and type in um, uh, just ideas, uh, thoughts, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm just giving some space for me because I want to go ahead and play with it and think about what this is. I did notice that it has still the open in browser. Uh, which was a lot like the last one, but this one has open in app. So you can open it in the browser and that's going to give you a new web page or the whole host of the features available online. And you can also open it in the app. I will say that the app for this one, it will open in OneNote. And personally, because I have a stylus and a touch screen, I love to be able to write and even make my titles come up in color. I can do that in OneNote. But when you come back to Teams, you might notice that not everything looks the same. You get more power or more features as you go to the web browser or you go to the app. So if you're really thinking about using this part in the class notebook to keep, keep your thoughts or your students are keeping their thoughts, they might want to have it open up in OneNote itself as the app because maybe on their tablet or their touchscreen or their phone, they want to doodle to keep their notes. But that's a feature for them and you can have that. So this is really cool. I'm seeing that there's a class notebook to keep everything. It's different than the files, but it's also a place where I can put notes and I can share notes and I can have a collaboration space. Uh, for my mind, it, it's, it's like this. And Christina, I'm curious about how you see it. The files tab is like my filing cabinet, like the stacks of things that I have kids. I'd say, okay, remember go over there and get your stuff because this is where it is. The copies are right over there. Where the class notebook for me feels like it's a whiteboard on the wall or it's the space when they're working at their desks and their groups or it's their journals that they keep as well. That's how it seems in my brain. I'm curious, how does your brain see it and what do you notice about them? I definitely think of my files, again, as the resources that students will get. I haven't assigned them to them. They're not work for students to complete. They may just be files, resources, information. Then my class notebook, can you click on that for me, Jeff? Class notebook, yep. You click on the class notebook, and if we can get back to the page here. We left off at the teacher page. Stay there, that's fine. Um, this is where I would be hosting, you know, Obviously, this is the teacher spot, so these would be my notes. But if I was back up in that collaboration space or in the welcome, this is where I can give students information. I can add notes for them. I can provide them resources. And I can also see where my students are writing in their own journals. I think back to when I was doing science journals, and I would have to carry those things home with me to grade them. And I'm so grateful now I wouldn't have to carry the whole thing with me because it's digital. I did want to point out just a couple features here that are pretty cool. Jeff, can you go up to where it says tags? Where it says what? Tags. It's going to be up on the top menu bar. Oh, yeah. I played with those. Those are sweet. So tags are ways for me to tag certain items, and then I can even reference them in the posts on the general channel or in any of the private channels. Hey, go check out this tag, because the students would then be able to filter all of the work because by the end of the school year, there's a lot of work. So I want to tag it with this is a phone call, this is whatever, so that it helps my students with organization. If you could go over just a little bit further to where you see that microphone. I wanted to point out that Microsoft has dictation. And so um, 
when you click on the microphone, everything that's being said is being translated onto the screen. It has a lot of features like new line, period, things like that. It will learn as you go. And this is a feature for both you and for your students to use. I think that's super cool. Yeah, so um, that's how I'm framing it. This is like the journal that we use for science or mathematics or whatever. And our files are the resources. And now we're gonna go into assignments as I'm looking at our clock and we just have about a little over 15 more minutes. Yeah, so let's do that assignments. I would note also one quick thing uh, that's really cool about the, the class notebook. You can take things from one notebook and put it into another notebook. You can take a page, if you will, if that's what it's called, and you can move it. Um, that's one of the options for moving. You can just drag it. It will give you the notification that you're changing your settings so who can see it. So I really appreciate the flexibility that I can do something privately for my class first, and then I can move it to share it. Yes, and when I've worked with a lot of teachers that have used Teams, that's what they've done. They've gone in and built their lessons ahead of time, the pages that they want to give to students, and then they just move them over as appropriate. And then that allows them to control it from year to year, from class period to class period. Now that we're in assignments, can you go ahead and click Get Started? All right, I'm ready. I'm going to make some cool assignments. Uh, I'm going to be awesome. Christina, would you coach me? Because, you know, I haven't made assignments for a while, and there's probably a few updates. I mean, I'm being real here. I'm being real with y'all. So uh, don't with, you love a blank slate? <laughs> yes, we says. have a blank slate because we haven't created any assignments in this class. We have made um, assignments in other teams possibly, but not in this team. So when we go down to that create button, we're going to be a little underwhelmed. Notice that there's only three features there. And we're going to talk about quiz tomorrow. And from existing, that means I've already created an assignment somewhere else and I want to reuse it. Um, those are my only options when creating an assignment. So go ahead and click on an assignment, Jeff. And as you can see, we have lots of different ways. Jeff is adding in a title right now. He could have clicked on a category. Again, a category is just like a tag that we use to help students sort their work and their assignments. And I'll let you go ahead and walk us through this window and I will point out things as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few things in for notes right now as I go through this. I do see that they're all of the regular things like your instructions. We want to be really specific in our instructions. I think it's a wise idea to make sure that you find a way to note things that you can take care of it later if you're not able to do it in the moment. Um, some of us like to use brackets and just call it out Jeff to do later <laughs> and be really specific because you know how your brain goes. You're like, I have all of these things. You're like, I'm not ready to do this. Uh, I don't know about you, but you find your own system and way to make sure that you bring the best for your kids. Uh, the instructions, maybe you also have some resources for the instructions. You could upload them. I see that's with the attachment right there. Uh, the rubric, you can add a rubric, you can add points. Uh, we can go through that. I'm going to go in no points at this point. Did you catch that, Christina? No points at this point. You're so and fun. Can yeah. we switch the interpreters now? Thank you. Yep. And uh, Christina, I see that here I can add this to all students or I could choose only a few students if I need to. So maybe there's a special assignment that I need to use or do, or I'm thinking about really taking care of all of my learners so I can assign something specifically to individuals here. I yeah, this is a great way to differentiate. Um, I did want to notice that we have the add rubric that we didn't touch right now because we will come back to that tomorrow as that's kind of an assessment piece. Awesome. Awesome. Um, it's also gives it assigns. It looks like I can assign it to, um, I can assign it to more than one class. So this is really powerful to be able to think about you're creating an assignment, but you can have it broadcast or, or assigned in different classes as well. It's a really nice feature. Uh, due dates are on here. If you want due dates, you can have that. Um, and then there are some other editing, editing uh, settings that we can edit here. Uh, Christina, what would you give for me for advice I should do next? Well, so at this point, I could choose if I want this assignment to 
post on the general stream? Do I want everybody in the team to see this assignment? Or would I like to send it to a different channel within the stream? So if you go to edit, this is where we can choose a different channel. Now, Jeff doesn't have a different channel in this um, sandbox, but remember when I was back in those biology period two and period three, this is how I can assign to just that channel. If awesome. I decide to let it post to the general channel, everybody in the team will have access to this assignment and they will have been assigned it. That's a nice feature. It is a nice feature, especially if we're thinking about a large group of people in the teams and then the channels are breaking down the different periods that I teach or the different subjects that I teach. Awesome. Uh, I see I can discard this. Um, I, I noticed that there's some automatic savings. Uh, that is uh, that it does the save like uh, just a moment ago. So I know that it will keep track of things, but I do have the option to save now, assign or discard. And to save just means that I'm not ready to give this to students yet. I want to come back in here and edit it later. Or maybe it's done, but it's not where I want to assign it at the moment. So then I could come back in and assign it later. I noticed when I hit save, uh, I came back to the main assignments page and there's nothing that's assigned. I, I, oh yeah, wait, that's a drop down menu under drafts. Those are those little arrows, drop down menu. There's my draft version. So that's what happened when I saved. It didn't assign it, but it's like, it's all ready to go. Now, Christina, since I haven't assigned it, kids can't see this, correct? That's correct. So you're just building it in the background. Um, there are some ways to schedule assignments, but I find that scheduling assignments if it's automatically going to pop up at, you know, say 10.05, what if I'm not quite ready for it at 10.05 because something interrupted my class today? So I really like to save them as drafts. It's a personal choice and then assign them in the moment when they're appropriate for students. I found that in the physical classroom, I could never control when the fire alarm went off. I could never control, you know, some of the other things that interrupted our day. So I find that using, um, drafts and then posting them is better for me personally than scheduling something. But that'll be up to you and your team to decide. Awesome. And I'm excited tomorrow when we're going to talk about grading and the things that are in there. But I do notice some things in here after it's been assigned. Uh, things have popped up on my screen, etc. So we're going to get into that tomorrow. I and know before to you go too far, could you show the student view really quick? Yeah. Oh yeah, Jeff, you're supposed to give some instructions and some work. You probably should finish that. Yeah, so I really like being able to click on that view before I assign it, just to make sure that what I was seeing on my side of the screen is what I want my students to see on their side of the screen. Awesome. I noticed that I can click back. I can also click back to assignments or class notebook or to files. I can get to my main parts. So again, for navigation today, we have our posts on the top. We have our files, class notebook, assignments, and tomorrow we're gonna to be really looking at grades and communication systems. So Christina, as we have a little bit of time left, uh, we should probably take a look at some of the Q and A's that have been coming in and think about that. And we do have some resources to share out in a moment and we have our closing for today. Okay, so we have, um, can you do a video meeting in more than one channel at a time? That's going to be um, specific to if you have a teacher assigned to each one of those channels. That's also going to be something I would want to test out in my environment because your district has a lot of settings in the background that as a teacher, you can't always control. So I would want to test this out in my district, maybe have a friend join a channel just to see if we could do more than one or if there's going to be any glitches that we should prepare for. Awesome. Um, can, so the scheduling of assignments, I'll get into that a little bit more tomorrow. Again, that is a feature that my admin has to give me permission to do. Um, so if you aren't able to see that feature, that is often something our tech people will have to help us with. Okay, so when students um, go in and do their assignment, I will show that tomorrow for sure. Um, I can look to see I need to exit full view screen because I have so many windows open. Jeff assigned me this, so I'm going to go ahead and go in. 
to my teams. And we call this LMS, so I'm gonna search my teams. LMS so 101 Learning Teams. Yes, and it is not showing it up. I think that's it, that may be mine. Um, I was gonna try to do the assignment. Um, oh, gotcha to show. So I'm going to take over the screen really quick. Go for it. And now you're down at my my desktop because that's what I did. I hope can I, oh, nobody. There we go. So I'm back in here and I have given an assignment to Catherine who has not completed it yet. If I go into the student view, I can see that she has not added any work. I had given her a reference and she's not been awarded any points yet. If I come over to this little corner, there's a book that I'm gonna be able to click on. And it's going to let me get further into her assignment. Look, it says adjust voice settings here, select the play buttons to listen. So this is an immersive reader inside of Teams that my student can use to have the assignment read to them. As well as my student, again, this is their view. When my student turns it in, I'll be able to see that they've turned it in. So this is the student side. This is Catherine. She hasn't attached any work to it. She would have to attach work to it. I can give feedback. This feedback only goes to Catherine. So I could say, um, need to submit a file. Let me know if you need help doing this because some students are going to need help for the first part. And then I can click return. She can then see that and continue working on it. And if I go into graded now, it shows that I gave her some feedback and I returned the assignment to her, even though she hasn't submitted it yet. I still have those features inside there. I can go into my world as Jeff and complete an assignment as well, but we will do that again tomorrow as I'm looking at our time and I want to be mindful of making sure that we have some time to synthesize and apply. In our chat, you should see this reflection. You had a reflection yesterday you'll have a reflection on Thursday. This is just a way for us to gauge how you're feeling and to get some growth data. Um, if you have your cell phone with you, please just feel free to open up your cell phone, scan it if you have a QR code reader, or again, it's in the chat if you need it. I'm just gonna pause a second for that and looking at things. We really appreciate you giving feedback to us and taking time to think about your learning. Uh, we give this as an opportunity to have you give your brain some space to think about things and also it informs us for what we can be doing better tomorrow and how we might be amplifying or providing some specific tools or asking some specific questions tomorrow. So this is feedback for us to help us be more ready for you for tomorrow. Also to note in the slide deck, which I see is in the chat window, uh, there is a list of resources at one of the last slides. I encourage you and invite you to take a dive into any of those resources. Thank you, Christina, uh, for how to do things in Teams and what works with Teams. And the OER Commons, by the way, is amazing. People are sharing out tons of work and the OER open educational resources that have been made available at some Creative Commons licensing. Uh, but there's great opportunities for you to dive into materials there. Uh, the C-Step Tech project is amazing as well and the Microsoft Educator Support Training. I also noticed that Pete put in the chat window some of the answers that came up for the questions that people had earlier. Yeah and I did want to address and um, there was a question about where you got that class notebook and that's because my team was created as a class and I was able to have it up here. So it's within Teams it does loosely connect to OneNote but if you go to OneNote, you're not going to find class team or class notebook until you create it within your team. And that's just because we set it up as a class and not as a PLC 
or another version of Teams. Tomorrow, and our homework for tonight, is that we hope that you start thinking about how could I structure my team to meet the needs of my students? Am I going to have various channels? Am I gonna use files? Am I gonna use the class notebook? And if so, how? What sections do I wanna add? What assignments do I wanna start thinking about for the first week of school? And then visit some of those resources that we've linked out to and see if you can find some additional things that you wanna add into your team. Tomorrow, we will come back at the exact same time in the exact same window of Zoom. We will talk about assessments and we will talk about reaching out to students and parent communication. That's some of those features of text messaging that some people had referenced on day one. We may have a chance to look at the video conferencing again, possibly given our time frame. But we really encourage you to go out and try something new. Push the buttons. Um, it's the internet. You can't break it. <laughs> you might undo it, but you can't break it. And you can delete your team. So once you create a team to play around in, don't feel like you have to stay there. It can go away. We showed that yesterday. We'll show that again tomorrow. But I want you to feel empowered to push the buttons, to click on things, to wonder. Matter of fact, Christina, I'm going to challenge in our, our participants from a lot of the questions that I was seeing to even go find the answers themselves. For example, play with the things that we saw today, like create a new assignment. I know we didn't show how to schedule an assignment, but if you try to create your own assignment and you're thinking about that, how do I schedule it? Because I know I can. I bet you you'll find it. Uh, give yourself some space and uh, the, the freedom to go figure it out. And I bet you'll find it. Um, and if not, we'll show you tomorrow. In any case, we wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today. It's wonderful to work together. And Christina, any other closing comments before we end our session? No, I'm just really excited about all the new learning that will happen, both with us and on your own. So as we leave all of our Zoom meetings these days, we wave. Thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.